If all you could do was make method calls, programming a realistic experiment would quickly become impractical. For example, suppose I want to use the same trial structure to display three different graphics. For this tutorial, I will continue to use text objects for convenience, but the same scenario could be used identically with bitmap objects, which can contain any general image. After the first trial presentation, I can replace the graphic contained in my picture, Pick 1, using a picture method called Set Part. This will cause the picture to display my graphic Text 2 instead of Text 1. To identify the stimuli in the event data, I can also change the event code for the stimulus event. To present the third graphic, I can do the same thing one more time. This may be fine for three graphics, but not for thirty. The first step towards making the program more efficient is to eliminate references to specific stimuli. If we have to refer to each stimulus by name, it's not possible to reduce repeated code. To do this, we will use another type of variable called an array. Instead of containing a single value, an array variable contains a list of other variables. We can create an array in SDL by enclosing a list of objects in an array description. This array will contain a list of variables that refer to our three text objects. In the PCL program, you can refer to one particular item in the list by typing the array name followed by opening and closing square brackets. Inside the brackets is a number which indicates the array item, where the first item is assigned number 1. Therefore, typing stimuli bracket 2 bracket has the same effect as typing text 2. Likewise, I can replace text 3 with stimuli 3. Next, we can eliminate the specific event codes that appear in the PCL program. To do this, we can place the event code information inside the graphic object itself using a property called Description. The Description property contains some text that you can use for any purpose. Presentation itself does not use this property for anything. To retrieve the value of this property in the PCL program, we can use a method call. The description method is the first method we have used that returns a value, rather than performing some action. The type of value returned is indicated by the editor hint. We can use this value as the argument for setting the event code. So far, all of the PCL variables we have used have referred to objects. You may also create PCL variables which contain numerical and text data. These are described in the PCL programming section of the documentation. There are different variable types to contain integers, floating point numbers, Boolean values, in other words, true or false, text data, and color values. 
To create such a variable, enter the type name, for example, int, and then a name for the variable. You may optionally assign an initial value to the variable using an equal sign. We call this type of PCL statement a declaration. You may change the value of any variable using another type of statement called an assignment. For example, I can increase the value of the variable counter by 1. This also illustrates general mathematical expressions which may be used anywhere in a PCL program. I can use my integer variable anywhere an integer is required, so I can use counter instead of the fixed number 2 as the array index. After adjusting the value again, I can do the same thing for the third stimulus. At this point, we have transformed our program so that the statements that display the second graphic are identical to those that display the third graphic. Whenever you have a section of code that is run repeatedly, you can use another type of statement called a loop. Each type of PCL statement is described in the PCL programming section of the documentation. Here you will see the basic structure of each statement with some examples. The section of the loop statement after the word loop can contain any number of statements that you want to execute before the repeated section of code is run. We could place our declaration of the variable counter here. The section of code that you want to run repeatedly is placed between begin and end. The section after until contains a boolean valued expression that indicates when the loop should stop. We only want to run this code until all the stimuli are shown, so we loop until the value of counter is greater than the number of stimuli. Here, count is a method of the array variable that returns the number of items in the array. If we need to add additional stimuli, we can do so without changing our PCL program at all. The general structure of the scenario is very common in experiments. We have a single trial object. We have stimulus objects inside an array in SDL. The PCL program uses a loop to repeatedly present the trial, changing certain aspects of the trial each time. Although the PCL program may look a lot more complex to you now, it is made up of just a few building blocks, method calls, declarations, assignments, and a loop. The most important thing is to understand the basic idea of each element and know where to look up specifics in the documentation. An excellent place to continue is in the tutorial section of the documentation. You may then continue on to the main section of the documentation.